And I think you just have to remember, you know, we're talking about things like salmonella and campylobacter because they make us sick and right. they have a yeah. d- distinct effect on us. But largely, they don't affect the bird. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Poultry Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, where we discuss the latest in poultry nutrition research and industry trends in approximately 10 minutes. My name is Sam Rochel, and I'm an associate professor of poultry nutrition at Auburn University and one of the co-hosts of the show. And I'm joined again for a second part series with uh, Dr. Michael Rothrock from the USDA ARS uh, to discuss some of the work that he's doing around uh, systems biology to better understand the microbiome uh, in different types of poultry production systems. So thanks again, Mike, for uh, joining us for a second episode. Thanks for having me, Sam. Um, So, yeah, and then, I mean, different components of the feed are meant to do different things. Like, you know, the parts that are meant to support the host yeah, obviously keep those in the whole time. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, right. you're oh, yeah, the whole, true, true. But you know, the components that you know, maybe you're trying to modulate the gut microbiome, and then have that have some effect on the host. Yeah, I would say for those components, you know, early or nothing. You know, it's if you don't if you don't make a dent in it early, I just the efficacy will probably go way down at that point because it's just hard to. I mean, you're talking about billions of cells per gram or for whatever, you know, right. to make a real impact on that community is, it's going to be significant. Like, and it's just hard to do. Very interesting. Um, anything else as far as, you know, major takeaways that you've learned from, from this work that you think could apply across all types of, of systems? You know, I think really monitoring the feed is an important way. And I think you just have to remember you know, we're talking about things like salmonella and campylobacter because they make us sick and right. they have a d- distinct effect on us. But largely, they don't affect the bird. Exactly. So to think that, you know, and just like the E. coli in your gut, your your immune system is not looking at that as a negative or an attacker or an invader and try to get rid of it. So some of these things, just because they're making us sick, if they're not making the chicken sick, the chicken's not going to really, to expect it to react negatively to something that's just a normal commensal organism isn't going to happen. So I think keeping that in mind when you're trying to develop some things, you know, maybe, you know, a better, a better way, I don't know about better, it's probably a bad term, but, you know, a more effective way to start thinking about these, these microbes, because really, yeah, can some salmonella make chicken sick? Yes. And it's quite obvious because they all keel over and, and will die. Right. But for the ones, you know, but those strains, our serotypes aren't really making us sick. Right. The ones that are making us sick, they, the, the bird doesn't care uh, for the most right. part. Right. So, you know, keeping that in your mind, trying to understand the ecology is, you know, it is, does make it more difficult because there aren't going to be obvious signs of distress in the bird that you can't look at the bird and be like, oh, that's a problem bird for salmonella. Right. I mean, that's just not going to happen. Um, so, you know, just, I think that's an important thing to at least keep in the back of everyone's mind when they're trying to think of anything with food safety and related to that is, you know, the answer, it's going to take some investigation. And so that's why using these, while while doing these system-based approaches are very difficult because you've got, you know, 40 some odd variables that you have accounted for, which means you probably have about 400 you haven't, right? you know, (laughs) but you just have to accept that and be like, well, if you can find something that looks like it's an important finding and you looked at 10 different ways to look at it and it pops up each of those 10 ways, well, the likelihood that may be something important to explore, like the brood feed I was talking about. Yeah. We looked yeah. at it at multiple different pathogens and that kept coming up as something of importance. So likely yep. multiple different things telling the same story. Maybe that's something we want to look further into. So, you know. It's not new. It's not nice and tidy science, but you know, it, it, it can be very exciting. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, anytime we look at, you know, any type of larger systems yeah. type research, I think it's, it's very important. And, and, and again, I, I don't, I agree that it doesn't replace more, you know, reduction 
no reductionist no, type that's... experiments, but it can get you to the to the right question uh, much quicker. A lot of times, you know, I mean, yeah. the same thing whether we talk about metabolomics or whatever, like these these bring good information, certain pathways, whatever. Ultimately, we've still got to drill down on those, but it can certainly give us uh, some interesting insights. And, yeah, and then for a lot of these studies, it's kind of it's the opposite of how so you typically think of science. You typically think of science as you know, you're going to get a question, you're going to test it, and you're going to get an answer. Yep. Whereas a lot of these studies are, you're going to go out and see what's there and then use that to develop the questions that you're going to later test. Exactly. So, yep. you know, and that's just a different way of attacking science. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and they both are equally valuable. And they yep. tell, you know, it's just a matter of which way and what your question is, you know, does does product X affect organism Y? Well, that's a very t- tight study. Yep. You know, yep. what in the environment affects salmonella? Well, that's, you know, yeah, you, yeah. you can't, you can't package that up in a nice bow like that one. So it's yeah. just, a, it's a way, you know, as long as you're happy or, you know, you're willing to accept that you're going to generate more questions than you, than you're going to answer and you're okay with that, you know, then then it's not a bad way to go. Sure. And I, I think, you know, we're, we're just on the cusp of really being able to, to deal with this with the, you know, the way that AI is developing machine learning, yep. uh, you know, those things we're, we're really getting to the point now where we can handle those types of studies where, you know, in the, you know, maybe 10 years previously, you know, it was much more difficult. Because, yeah, from working with those kind of studies, one well, my collaborator is the one advantage indirectly, not that I really designed it that way, but it's because I ended up having just a wealth of metadata mm-hmm. on all these samples. And really to do those kind of analyses to have any power behind anything, you need lots of samples and lots of sure. data for those samples. So, right. you know, as we move forward, if we want to use those tools, we just have to keep in our mind, well, if you want to have them be a, have any kind of effective outcome or predictive capability, it has to be backed by a whole lot of data points. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, and just remember that when you're trying to add your data in, it has to, you got to have a lot of data there. Elevate bird well being and improve profitability with Cargill's tailored nutrient solutions that deliver performance. Cargill is leading through applied nutrition, leveraging deep nutrient insights and understanding of the animal's nutrient requirements to achieve your production and performance goals. And, you know, fortunately, that's one thing we have no shortage of in the poultry industry. Uh, I mean, there's there a lot of data out there and we probably haven't utilized it like we should. And, and I mean, a lot of these things, especially when we talk about the microbiome or even, you know, subclinical challenge of any type of pathogen. I mean, yep. in research facilities, it's so hard to model that. And so, uh, you know, even when we do design tight experiments, it, it's really hard to model what's happening, whether that's in a conventional system or a pasture and so I think, you know, this is where the real opportunity, okay, these questions that we haven't really been able, yeah, we can do a, a severe challenge or, a, yes. you know, make a big change and move the needle. But like uh, really seeing how these things are kind of interplaying, I, I think this is the a, a really interesting approach. So. Way to go. Yep. hundred percent. Well, great. Well, hey, I appreciate uh, the time today. Uh, this was a very uh, interesting uh, interview for our audience. And so I'm sure they're going to take away some some big picture ideas. And so so thanks again for your time and, and the work that you're doing. I don't know. Thank you for having me. And I'm assuming my contact information will be associated with this somehow. And so if anyone out there has any questions, feel free to reach out and, you know, I'll try to Chances are I may not know the answer, but I may know people who do. So I have no problem facilitating that kind of uh, right. answer for everyone. So uh, thank you for your time and attention. Yep. Thanks, Mike. I really appreciate what you're doing. Uh, really interesting information. I uh, appreciate the, uh, joining us again to tell us about your work. And to all the listeners, uh, thanks again for joining and look forward to seeing you on the next one. Thanks again. Hey, everyone. We're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. And if you have a poultry nutrition related research trial and would like to come on the show and talk about it and share it with us, feel free to email the research link, uh, the paper where we can find it, or the abstract to hello at wisenetics.com. That's hello at wisenetics.com. And I look forward to hearing from you.